Lois, thanks for taking the time to join us. Can you tell us a little why you decided to travel all the way to Ottawa to testify at this committee? Well, I was asked by our local MP, um, Glenn Motts, to uh, provide testimony for uh, this committee that is looking into the uh, Indigenous people and the correctional system in Canada. And because I've been uh, teaching in this area, I teach at the University of Lethbridge, I teach criminal justice uh, classes both at the university at the college, and I do uh, reports, uh, glad you reports. Um, so I, I have a lot of uh, experience with uh, these issues and I regularly interview clients uh, with regard to why they're in the prison system. Lois, what is uh, the biggest reason Indigenous peoples end up in prisons at higher rates than non-Indigenous people? Well, some have compared uh, prisons to the residential school experiences of their predecessors, you know, the parents, grandparents. And a lot of the uh, youth that are in prison or the younger people did not go to a uh, residential school but still their intergenerational effects are felt by that uh, group. And, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with the social conditions uh, for people living on reserve, the extreme poverty in many cases, the lack of opportunities, um, the need for more education training, uh, wealth creation in the communities. Because of the Indian Act and the policies, um, most of the, la all of the lands are crown lands. So people can't develop their own lands and they're kind of stuck, stuck in this cycle of poverty. And a lot of these social ills are a result of poverty. And, and many of the people that I see are, uh, have been in foster care. Uh, the one guy I just interviewed 15 foster homes, you know, like there's something wrong. Uh, and because of the breakdown in the culture due to uh, a lot of the policies with the Indian Act, residential schools, we find that this next generation uh, of people, you know, is suffering the effects, but they don't know why. They don't quite understand. Um, and, you know, we have problems like addictions, um, violence. Uh, you know, we see a lot of the, the social problems. We don't see the, the positive things, unfortunately. There are so many individuals that are doing good things. We have a lot of doctors, you know, educators, people that are, but we only hear about the pathologies. And I, I believe that uh, uh, we need to do something, not just government, but I think the tribal leadership needs to take control and, and look after their own people. And, and I think that's why you see a lot of people in the prison system because they're, they're not humanized, they're not treated as human beings, they're just processed through a system that's very impersonal and coercive. So the, these are primarily really good people, you know, trying hard, but uh, their circumstances, the Supreme Court uh, directed judges to look at the circumstances of Aboriginal people, and that's what's referred to as the glad you, um, you know, sentencing principles. Well, it's just quickly here, what, what can be done to, uh, to reverse these trends from continuing? Well, I think, uh, you know, a lot of it is education, training. Uh, we need to start, you know, developing economies. I've done a lot of, I did some of my doctoral research on tribes that are doing very well. Literally transformed their communities uh, to be self-supporting, you know, looking after their families, not dependent on government. And I think that's what we need to do and get that pride back in the, uh, in the people. We, um, the prisons are perfect places. They're opportunities. They're places where we can heal and, and provide hope. But the direction has to change. They can't be just warehousing people uh, and people that don't conform, putting them in solitary confinement. There's a lot of things that could change. Uh, the other thing that I'm kind of hoping that they'll involve the women, the grandmothers in providing direction and guidance and care for a lot of these people that are incarcerated. And that's tribal society. Tribal societies had justice. They had a swift justice. It was based on natural laws that, uh, you know, everything comes back to your deeds. You know, if you do and if you think bad things, they come back to you. If you do good, it comes back to you. You're blessed as well. Those were principles of justice that we need to re-parent, uh, re-teach our children.
Lois, such an important issue. We certainly appreciate you taking the time here today to, to speak about it with us. Thank you very much for having me.